I told my friends, like, hey, I'm a flower shop right now. And they're like, sure you are. <laughs> <laughs> My name is April Cox, if you don't know me already, and I am a self-published author myself, and I also run a program called Self-Publishing Made Simple. And through the course of the past couple of years, I have published at least half a dozen kid authors. And today we have a very special speaker. We have Rhea Halper, who is here with her dad, Ari. And I want to tell you a little bit about Rhea. She has co-written with her father, Ari, a book called Felice Navidog. She came up with the idea in December of 2019 while she was dancing and singing around the house with her pet, her black doodle, in the kitchen. She was just eight years old at the time. Rhea is half Turkish, half American, and 100% all about animals and creativity. She lives in Westport, Connecticut with the rest of her family. Please join me in welcoming Rhea and learn about what inspired her and the experience in publishing her first book. Welcome, Rhea. So nice to have you. Hi. Tell us a little bit about when you came up with this idea of publishing this book. What prompted it, the dancing around, and what were you doing at the time? And I'd love to hear the experience of kind of when this idea struck you and how you and dad kind of worked through that process. This was my dog's first Christmas, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and I was still so excited. Even though I got him a few months prior, I was still obsessed with him. So I was dancing around with him and singing Feliz Navidad, but changing the lyrics to dog. And after the song was over, Baba asked me, well, who is Feliz Navidad? And I go, well, it's Santa's pet dog. And then we started to form a story around that. So have you always loved reading and writing? I really like to read graphic novels and I really love to write. Writing is my favorite subject in school. So Ari, tell us what it was like when your daughter came up with this idea. and What prompted you to want to take it to the next level with her? Well, initially, when she tossed out that Felice Navi dog was Santa's pet dog, I was like, I love that. That could be like a children's book. And so we started kicking around what the plot might be. And, and that was kind of it. It was just uh, a little bit of just a, a creative fun what if. But as I sat down and started to play with it, it was over Christmas break. So I had the spare time, to be honest. And as I, I really started to get into it and craft the story further and further, it just, it, it really kind of wrote itself quickly. And we were both really loving it and was sh showing it around to my wife and my son and everybody was, was super supportive and really liked it. And then I... Just, I don't know, I, I was curious about maybe looking into publishing. It was something I you know, hadn't done yet in, in my career. I came from a, a creative background in advertising and I wanted to learn and ex explore and grow and try something new. So I started to delve into that world and you know, learn about even self-publishing and see if we could pull it off. What were you hoping to accomplish, Rhea, with the book as you started to see these things come together? What was your dream of when this book is published, what will it do for kids like you? In the book, it said for children everywhere who have dreams and for other kids to do this too, for other kids to be creative and making something new for the world to see. How was it for you to go through this process? And, you know, what were you hoping that this would do? It sounds like it's brought you and your daughter together with great father-daughter bonding time. Yes. I mean, uh, that was certainly one of my favorite parts about this whole experience. But what I was hoping initially, I was hoping to learn from it. I was hoping to give her an amazing learning experience as well uh, for both of us to kind of find our way together and thus uh, bond over it in the process. And, I, you know, I love a good challenge. So I, I was looking to see if we could actually, you know, do it and make a great product at the end of the day. Rhea, what was your favorite part of going through this publishing process? 
My favorite part of going through this publishing process was the story itself, building that story of Felice and Santa and the adventure. And it was just a lot of fun. What was the most challenging thing for you? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry, Mama, I'm going to have to steal this from you. The most challenging part was we had it pretty much all written up and we were so excited. And then we found out that Rudolph was a copyrighted character. And that was a really, really big problem. But we thought it would be fine because, hey, what do you know? The owners of Rudolph's character lived in Connecticut. So that sounded- One town over you. And my dad and me thought, oh my God, that's great. They're gonna say yes. Clearly, they didn't. So Rudolph was part of your story. Yes. And Rudolph was, was leading the sleigh, just like other so many other Christmas stories that we've seen. Yeah, so initially, Felice was to replace just Rudolph, not all the deer. But once we lost that ability for him to just replace Rudolph, we had to do what? We had to rewrite a lot of the book and... I honestly wasn't sure if we were going to make the date that we had originally planned it because we didn't have to rewrite something, even though we already had most of it written up. Right. We were worried we weren't going to make the, the Christmas deadline, which is really kind of starts in October, November. Yeah, that was no fun. But you guys rose to the challenge. And you were able to work with Brooke, rework the story, get things moving forward. And we met the deadline, which was awesome. That was a big accomplishment. How old were you, Rhea, when the book actually published? I was nine years old when the book actually published. And I remember that day I was in California with my mom and mom said, Bob's on the phone. I pick up the phone and Baba tells me our book is officially published. And that was a really, really great day. What did your friends and your teachers and others in the family say about, you know, you being a published author? Well, my family was so supportive and so happy and stuff like that. But when I told my friends, actually a few of them didn't even believe me. <laughs> I told my friends, like, hey, I'm a father shop now. And they're like, sure you are. <laughs> <laughs> Some of my good friends did believe me. Yeah. Thank you to them. And they were really supportive. Did you get an opportunity to read it to your classroom? Yes, we did. So how did that feel? That felt scary, but at the same time, cool. Because, like, I have to see them every single day. And if they didn't like my book, I have to live with that every single day. So I was nervous, but it turned out to be amazing. And, yeah. Ari, how was this whole experience with you going through that process with your daughter? And what kind of support did you have in your community? It sounds like you guys have been doing interviews and other things as well together as a father and daughter team? I guess multifaceted. I would say just, you know, selfishly and personally, the thing I got the most out of it was something for us to bond over and build together. It was probably the most connected we had ever been up until that point, which I, I, I really loved. And uh, I would say it was probably the greatest gift that I got out of the book itself. But I also have to say that some of the support that I got were from people who I didn't even know, like yourself, um, like Brooke, like Priam, you know, guiding me through a process that I was less familiar with. And also, even uh, as we got garnered support from strangers online who wound up buying the book, uh, loving it, and actually asking us to do talks and uh, send it to their schools and, and do, uh, I guess, uh, you know, remote author readings since 
because uh, of COVID and not being able to do them in person. And that was really remarkable just to see people light up to the story. And you know that it's genuine because you don't even know them. There's no <laughs> uh, vested interest or uh, self-serving dynamic to it. It's just genuine appreciation for the product that you created. So uh, it was uh, it was really gratifying in that way. Ray, what kind of recommendation or advice can you give other authors who love to read and would love to write their own book as well? Okay, here's what I'd give to them. Never underestimate the power of doing little things like dancing with my dog, singing Feliz Navidad is not a really big thing. I didn't go on an amazing adventure and then came up with the story. No, I was dancing with my dog around my house near Christmas. That's how the story began. The littlest things can turn to this giant idea. Ari, what about you for parents who have kids that would love to be able to write a story or that come to them with these amazing, creative, ingenious ideas? What would be your recommendation to the parents? I would say to keep your eyes and ears peeled, if you can keep your ears peeled. You know, we all know that kids are full of creativity and constantly tossing out ideas. But I think that many of them wind up not going any further than that, right? And perhaps some of these creations, some of these ideas could lead to much bigger adventures to Ray's point that she just made. And it's not just an experience for them. It, in turn, it will be an experience for the parents as well, for the, for the whole family. And what more could you ask for than that? Are you planning on writing a second book? Actually, it's very, <laughs> very, very slow going. But <laughs> hey, but the, the, it's true. But we have been writing a second book. And I'm really excited about it. So what do you think was the longest part of just publishing the book? It just took the most time and the most effort. I would say it was the illustration. It took a really long while, but when we finally got the books, there was a small little mistake. <laughs> this, this green book here, the, you see how there's green book here? This yeah. turned out to be yellow. And well, initially, when we designed the book, we had started off with it being yellow. And it was actually uh, April's recommendation. She said, I think it would actually be better in a more Christmassy color, like a green or a red. So we looked at it and ultimately decided on the green, uh, hence why it's green. And so we changed everything. But the thing is, is sort of like an M.C. Escher painting, the book that they're reading in there is is the book and on the book is them reading the book and on that book is them reading the book and it goes inward and inward and inward. And when they changed the main book to green, they also changed the, the next book to green, but the book that they were holding in there was still the yellow from the original. So <laughs> like, like it was all these little ripple effects from, uh, you know, the design of Felice Navi dog, which took a while to ultimately get the right look and feel of the dog itself to the style of animation that we had in our heads which we did a lot of research on at the library right we went to the library and for like an hour right we yeah. we just pull out a bunch of books that we like the style look at different things and be like oh this one's nice blah 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 and we literally i think went through about 40 books and we didn't think a single one was the style for our book, really. And it actually took us a while to even find the illustrator. We, we got samples from people all over the world. And ironically, the person who we wound up going with was someone both far away and close to home at the same time, a woman named Priyam uh, in Mumbai of all places. So that's the far away part, close to home, in that she had someone uh, who April had worked with many times before, but um, it was in a style that she really hadn't kind of done before. But for whatever reason, she she seemed to get it more than anyone else we had gotten a sample from. But that whole process uh, with the illustrations really did take the longest. A lot of them were like not not the style we were going for either. It was 
like too much of a serious style and, or it wasn't the right aesthetic that we wanted or stuff like that. And it just took us so long. So I think I'm going to agree with my team. <laughs> Did you find your friends now getting motivated to write books, even if they're not publishing? Actually, one of my friends is writing a book. And it's awesome. after I told them about this, he it started coming up with this idea, which was really, really cool. I have to say, same with me. I had lots of friends ultimately come out of the woodwork and say, oh my gosh, I can't believe you did it. You got to tell me how it was. I have an idea for a book. And uh, since then, I've had at least two, if not three different friends self-publish as well. And some kids would come up to me and like tell me ideas that they had. And only one as actually doing, doing it. And it's one of my very good friends. Let's ask Rhea to do a reading of the book. I would love to have that. Police Navidad, the story of how Santa's pet dog saved Christmas. To Shadow, our four-legged inspiration, and to children everywhere who never give up, even when nothing seems to be going their way. So that was actually the very first drawing of the dog. We put that in there before, uh, during the test. That was her sample that she did that won her the, the job for illustration. So we decided to put it in. Yes. Okay. We've you want me to hold it and you can read it? Can make it easier for We've heard every tale and we know every story about old St. Nicholas and all his glory. And Mrs. Claus, too, who helped spread tons of joy to each helpful girl and to each eager boy. There's Donner and Dancer and Prince and Vinson, Common and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen. Then there's the elves known to take our way, making dolls, skateboards, and modeling clay. Even a snowman, we've all heard a ton. Yes, we've heard of a story that is except one. About Francis Pet Christmas, Police on the Dog, and the year he saved Christmas from Pittsburgh's worst fog. Just Google it and you will see what I mean. It happened December of 2019. Twas the eve of the eve, and just like they all should, Santa's old whales worked as fast as they could. Ribbons were curled and presents were packed while Mrs. Claus made Santa's favorite snack. And there you can see cookies. <laughs> the nice list was checked, and of course, then checked twice. The flight plan in the hour as the sleigh got the ice. But just then, Pittsburgh's fogginess grew. And to make matters worse, all the deer have the flu. Here's all the deer. That's one of the things that we had to rewrite, and also it's Bob's favorite scene. It's Bob's favorite drawing. Everyone gasped at the thought of flight through the darkness and fog with no reindeer in sight. Christmas was canceled, an elf cried to herself as everyone put the toys back on the shelf. But Santa yelled, stop, this is not what we do. Grab every last flashlight and a bucket of glue. So 99 flashlights were glued to the sleigh, but it wasn't enough to light Santa's way. What about flying, asked an elf named Zeke. I could build wings for the sleigh in a week. Hold Christmas till New Year. Now all hope is gone. The kids would explode if they waited that long. They thought every thought they could possibly think and wrote each of them down in blue junior pair ink. Yet no one idea seemed to get the job done, though the candy cane catapult sounded like fun. Then Mrs. Claus felt an idea start to spark, the furriest spark in the form of a bark. It's down at his, her feet and quite happy to help was fully snappy dog, his paw raised with a yelp. 
was right then when they found their way through the fog. Let's use snow sonar rolls from the Lee Snowy Dog. The sound rays will bounce off the objects instead. We'll see clear as can be using barking instead. Mrs. Claus looked at Santa and Santa looked back. Their options were scarce to keep Christmas on track. And while the dogs and rangers are not quite the same, it was try out Felice or go borrow a plane. So Zeke worked and he welded as fast as he could on a sonar device made from stockings and wood. Then they sprang into action and in just one day trained police Navi Dog how to fly with a sleigh. But learning such thing in a day is a feat. It takes practice and focus and mountains of treats. And then this is actually my favorite illustration ever in the entire book. Then at last, it was time for the moment of truth to see if his training was put to go good use. So they took all, they all took a deep breath and with fingers crossed, switched the sonar to on as the rain dog took off. He raced down the runway with paws everywhere, and before Santa blinked, they were up in the air. It's flopping like winged socks and eyes wide as plates. His first day as a deer was going quite great. Although Felice did chase a pigeon or two and sniffed Santa's butt while he tied up his shoe. Then southward they flew, hitting... Each little town, Santa's scale chimneys going both up and down. At last, they reached Pittsburgh's fog. The fog was so thick, Felice barked so loudly, he nearly got sick. But the presents he found their way under the tree, while hose filled the air and up in large groups of three. And no matter how sorry, no matter how dark, Christmas say Christmas, all thanks to a bark. So still to this day, you can hear late at, late at night, Felice snuffing dog, yapping proudly mid-flight, a part of the team from that day until now, right there up in front from New York to Moscow. A reminder that things often don't go as planned, but think out of the box and you'll turn cans into cans. And then here's the end. <laughs> that was amazing. What an awesome story. I love it. This is the 10 by 10 book. And... Which can be purchased at FeliceNavidogBook.com. And on Amazon. The paperback or the 8x8. Eight eight. And, and, and if you get it from policenavidogbook.com, you can actually get a signed autograph of us and we will send it to you. So now you've got to give us a little bit of some information about the new book, a topic, a little bit of something, and then we'll let everyone go and jump off to the rest of their day. This has been such an amazing conversation with you. I'll give them the title and you can tell them a little bit what it's about. Okay. The title of the book is Felice Snobby Dog Saves New Year's Eve. Oh, okay. I'll tell you a little bit about this. So to start things. Who's Eve? Who's Eve? Eve, we came up with this girl who is Santa's granddaughter. And, and. Um, By the way, real quick, a surprise guest. This the is, dog! Is <laughs> the one who stays for everything. The little puppy who could. Okay, so anyway, Eve, Santa's granddaughter. And Felice here, and Eve and Santa and all these people go to this big New Year's party for as a celebration for. It, it picks up one week after Felice just saved Christmas, so, so it's a New Year's party celebrating that they saved Christmas. Right. So they were celebrating, and Eve's back starts to hurt, 
and her parents take her to the doctors and it turns out she has scoliosis. Where this came from is I mentioned earlier that I went to California with when the call. That's because I have scoliosis myself. She's wearing a, a brace, if you could see. Okay. <laughs> so that's what the inspiration came from. And Felice is, helps her cope with the scoliosis treatment. And, and Zeke, being the thinker he is, makes a break brace for Felice too. And it be, and it becomes this great thing of Felice and helping Eve get through scoliosis. Right. It's another message of resilience as Felice helps her get through the scoliosis treatment. I cannot wait to see more of how this all comes together for you guys. Will yeah. you come back and talk about it again once you move a little further along with, with the book? Of course. Yeah, sure. Awesome. Well, thank you, guys. This was so much fun. And I hope other kids that are out there and parents that are out there watching this just know that this is such an amazing opportunity for you and for your children. Even if you never publish anything, work together on these creative projects, get their mind working and reach for the stars because, boy, these are amazing stories that are going to bless so many other people as well. So thank you all. Keep working on your dreams and everything and anything is possible that you set your mind to. Bye. Thanks for having us. Thank you, April. If you have a child and they want to create something like this and you're not sure where to begin, then feel free to go to selfpubmadesimple.com and schedule a free consult with me. I'm here to help and to volunteer some of my time to help these amazing kids bring their stories to life. And I can connect you with some great people to help get them there. 